Damien Green, a friend of mine, who does, who does this program, asked me to give my take on this matter as it relates to the, you know, locks and school back in Jamaica that that wonderful little baby girl facing. Now, I can give all type of views, but I can also give a personal experience. My personal experience with this matter happened some somewhat at a tender age too because this is nothing new and we could say it's an attack on Rasta but it's never really stopped you know because you know as most people in Jamaica who have African descent they don't truly understand themselves and they don't know their own culture but back to the whole scenario and the whole case on the man when you think about it and you should really do a research if you want you will see that this has been going on for centuries way back to the slave masters all of these christian minded people mostly feel as if they should you know push this narrative of trimming ahead to go to school which personally up to this day i can understand what that have to do with learning because it don't block anything it don't stop anything it don't distract anything my personal experience started when I was trying to go to a school back in Jamaica and my father had to make preparation to send me to this so-called expensive school by the name of Marjam and I had to cover my locks for whatever reason I have to cover my locks under one cap because they say it was not properly kept anyway roll the punches and um that stigma live on up, up to this day because going to school as a Rastafari any form of lax that you have it doesn't matter back then you were always teased and troubled like something dropped on you or something wrong with you so that is one thing where I had to go through we never get the ban as this little baby girl get but it's to show you that that was back in the 1995-96 just the other day still certain way but and not new so Jamaicans and a whole need to check themselves because this thing start from Jamaica the lax wasn't started by Jamaicans but the cultural expression that tied to it was started in Jamaica and surprisingly enough people from all over the place different part of the world as you might know bring this faith or walk with this culture and we who are Jamaicans for the most part who who supposed to be Jamaicans is trying to sidestep and avoid this thing and go to somebody else's thing I find that very silly insipid and very distasteful because it does not make no sense now there was a, another family of Rastafarians back then going to school with me this is a Muta Baruka good friend profile. He have some daughters and some sons who used to go to school with me. He can give his account. Same thing. They must have to left the school as soon as I left. Well, I left the school before them because I couldn't take the stigma. But the thing kind of lift up, as you can call or recall, for the past recent years. But now I'm not sure to bring it in back government of Jamaica, the current government of Jamaica, I mean, I don't like politics, but I have to say this, he's a hypocrite, because he have a brother who supposedly wear locks, so I understand that, he might have tried to against it, but I'm not supposed to pass a certain way, in a Kingston at that, to reach national news, so the people could be a big girl or somebody, these kind of stupid consequences for what, he not worth it, he not make no sense to what go on now, see there, Rasta don't tell him about weed, so we are kind of not kind of idiot. Jamaica lag and if you catch up the rest of the world. Jamaica, when 90% of anybody in the world asks about Jamaica, the first thing they might tell about is ganja. And we are catch up back the market. When they rasta they don't tell us a long time. Say so invest in this, deal with this, pay off the debt with this. We don't nah listen. We don't nah listen. And we are gonna catch up and continue to catch up and never play pepper. We're not problem. So my personal view is, you don't be surprised that all of the real warriors out there will know the thing. Keep on your head pound nobody. Zane, 
the parents of the little girl said them not nah, trim. I hope she don't get trim. Find the next school or home school like one I suggest because it make no sense. I fool you say I do. You know count for nothing. The uncle and prevent the little baby from doing what she wanna do in a school. That's all them I do. Come talk about lice and unkept and unhealthy and all that foolishness there. When lice now synonymous to Rasta. Lice going to anybody head. Me not understand them for fool people there, you know. But anyway, I don't to cost too much. Give thanks, Saramian, to express my point and bless up. Mouta Baroka to the world, you know? Give thanks. <laughs> she had me to take a picture to show you which part was there, you know? Yeah, man. We ship up location. Yes. It's a greetings. Give thanks. It's wonderful to be here again. As you know, this is the cutting edge. 20 odd years, nearly 30 years we are running it, you know. And she is always with me. Well, we will continue the journey. You know, continue the journey because this month we're going to celebrate Marcus Garvey's birthday. So, we're going to feature Marcus Garvey tonight, plus other things, but we want to play one of the things that we usually play this time of the year. Um, we're going to make she and do him thing and we're going to come forward. Yes, we want a subject in school and Marcus. Of course, we want a subject in school and Marcus. But it's like how the whole heap of argument are going on about locks in a school and black hair and them something there. Like. We want to recant or revisit Marcus Gave and Marcus Gave birthplace. Where we hear, we keep hearing how oh, they're going to do this and do that, and the people they're going to find some place, they're going to find place where the people them go. All these things, and it's years now it's going on, years, years. And them, and them are treat you like so we are some merry-go-round carousel. Why is it that it is so difficult? For really deal with the idea of Marcus Mosiah Gavi. We are talking about even school, and we still not find it in the school yet, that's how it's supposed to be. We don't understand where we are going. Why we have to keep fight for the same thing over and over and over? And it's black people, we are talked about it, and they know the significance of this thing. So as it comes round to Marcus Gavi Earth Day again, we have to keep repeating the same thing again. What is it that there is a refusal to accept? Can they make him a token hero? He is, a, he is the first national hero of Jamaica, Marcus Mosiah Gave. He is the most popular black man in the Western world. People want to say Bob Marley still, but we know that is, if it wasn't for Marcus Gavi, the philosophy and opinions of Bob Marley that was embedded in Rastafari would never be so potent out there that, Mark, that Bob Marley could have been one of the most popular black men in the Western world. That's all. But I said Marcus Gavi is relevant today as it was in the 20s and the lip service that them pre them them keep giving to marcus Gavis is, is unbearable man like the locks and the black ear in a school we have to keep going on and on and on and on about the same thing government come government go government come government go and we still can't figure out what is the reluctance about not recognizing Marcus Gavi. I say recognize him. I don't mean put up bus or him, put up statue or him. Him leave a legacy here. Him second wife, Amy Jakes Gavi, compile a book and them call it Africa for Africans or the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Gavi. And it keep coming, coming, coming. And it is not seen as something legitimate. Marcus Gavi is one of the most 
what I'm calling it, is, is recognized as one of the greatest philosophers. I mean, I talk about black philosophers. He is recognized as one of the great philosophers of time, of the, the, the 21st, 20th century. How the hell we can produce such a great person? And don't recognize that in philosophy and opinion is what bind him as a philosopher to the world, to the oppressed, to African people. And we can recognize that he must be taught in the schools. How much time we are going to fight for that? Marcus Garvey, the man from St. Anne, gave world leaders things to hold on in their them life as leaders. Marcus Garvey, coming from Jamaica, not recognizing Jamaica, if he left Jamaica and said, nah, come back here. You know, Marcus Garvey said, Jamaica is a ridiculous place. Marcus Garvey said that. He said, Jamaica is a ridiculous place. And him go to England and dead. I will for people, if some elder little people I go tell you say Marcus Garvey not dead and all them something there but it it it, it really hard wrenching for no say after so much years man we have to fight we Marcus Garvey the ones them who recognize Marcus Garvey if you ask a youth now on the road about Marcus Garvey him don't know say he's a national hero him don't know what to tell you about Marcus Garvey how can you have your child and have national heroes and you can't, them can't tell you nothing about the heroes. What is the purpose of a hero? A hero is a one who excel above the normal. Him excel. Marcus Garvey excel more than excel. People call him all Moses, the black Moses. People call him all that thing. In the bubble house, he's recognized as part of the Trinity. That should show how, 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 how on a pedestal Marcus Garvey is placed. Marcus Garvey amongst black people is seen as an African-American hero, not a Jamaican hero. And most American youth, most American don't even know that Marcus Garvey come from Jamaica. Them feel them was American because them do most of them works them in, in America, in a place named Harlem. And we outsiders, so all we know about Marcus Garvey is that Marcus Garvey was born in St. Anne. That's all we know about Marcus Garvey. It's a shame. Them say Rasta is the memory of the Jamaican people. Certain things where Jamaican people won't forget, we remind them about it. Barry Chevans, the dean of the faculty of social science, the late great Barry Chevans, did say that. Him say Rastafari is the memory of the Jamaican people. And when we really check the things them that Jamaican people want to forget, and we are remind them continuously about it, and sometimes them look by as like Jonjo. <laughs> yeah, Jonjo go with people here, I joke with this. But I get a call a while ago where eh, astonished me. Because in the 20 other years I have had this program, I never hear this man call me yet. And do you remember to talk to me about the same year thing that's unbelievable? So I hope him call me back, you know. I just be gonna call, be gonna tell him to call him. <laughs> Cause he never hear call me yet. I feel so good when I hear a voice like that for my program, yeah. Yes. But yes, Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. Hello? Yes, Muta. Tommy Kwan. <laughs> yes, no, man. No, no Tommy. I I, ju I just watched on stage and I was just saying, um... Oh, you know what on I, stage? Yes, 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 yes. And I, I, I just thought that it was it was brilliant, the fact that um, the revelation, you know? Yes, yes, And yes, yes, all yes. That, that came out on that interview a while ago. So you know, a while ago, you know, you know, know about... Um, St. Andrew, Andrew Girls School and, and, and um, Walmart's. Yes. With, with Miss yes. Pinto, I know they never want Afro in the school. Yes, remember, they didn't want Afro. And um, and one at a time, it was even 
I, I think the students sit back to say, I think, what to Miss Pinto, that the, the, the kink you need to get out is not the kink in our ears, the kink in your mind. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, because, you know, sometimes, you know, Muta, people look at us and so because we don't come about and we complain and we, we do all this and we do all that. But you, you're right, you know, of the majority of the people really dislike dreadlocks. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, man. Don't I, I mean, that for years. Yeah, listen. I remember a police superintendent tell me years ago, he said, Tommy, I like you, you know, but I tell you the truth. If I see my son, if I get up one man, I see my son dreadlocks, I just kill him. <laughs> yeah. And I remember too going going to the police station yes. and them who were bridging from one sea, as you remember there? Yes, yes. Well, yes. That place, and when I go Tell to them they said, Tommy, dreadlocks can't be a dreadlocks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you could have more security behind you than John Reed Boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is that is a stigma. And I was even remembering like the guy from here, Jamaica, I think his name was Michael. Michael, when yes. He, as, as a pilot, and he had to... For you, Jamaica. They wouldn't... They had to, he had to leave the job and then go fly a small plane between... Yes. Um, we call Tinsipen and Mobile because I'm say that the dreadlocks would affect his hearing. That's yeah, all like Jojo. He put the earphone over his head, it would affect his hearing. And That's all like Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> the Tabby, Tabby. Yes. Oh, oh, them allow you in a church with your Jojo. Well, the thing is, you know. I love that you have a church with your Jojo, you know. <laughs> the thing is, the interesting thing, you know, about this whole thing and Jesus, you know, is that the culture of the Nazarene. <laughs> Yes. In, in the culture of the Nazarene in accepting that he might separate himself, you know, put himself apart. Yes. And that is from that is apart from evil and yes, evil yes. doing things. Is that he became a dreadlock, you know. Yeah, Nazarene. Yes. No. So if naturally in, in the whole sense uh, uh, of the word, if yes. if let me tell me say Jesus come from England, I could accept him looking one way. But you never see about them the Jews are Nazarene. You never see about I, the I, I can only see me looking one that other way. And even yeah. Billy Graham's son yeah. came here and said, No apologies. Jesus yeah. had to be a black man. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. At least he never said black man. He said he had to be a man of color. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's terrible though. Yeah. Are you sure tonight again? Them show huh? tonight again. Them show the answers tonight again. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. it was the first time I'm seeing it because um, when, and and um, I, 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 <laughs> I like the parting words, you know. The parting words. <laughs> I know Winfred won't forget that one to know that in me in me to mask up. <laughs> <laughs> When we look at the mask, you know, and especially how you wore it there yeah, on that show, it's yeah. kind of a reminder of our people going across the deserts of Africa, you know. Of course. And the original way. That's so weird, man. Yeah, man, yeah, man. That's why yeah, we yeah. come to them sandstorm and all of them things. Yeah. But you know, say last week, ironically, you know, last week, me that talk about, yeah. oh, me and Antoinette Arden would farm a, 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 a party and demonstrate against Miss, uh, Miss Pinto, the woman, because she said she don't want to offer in her school. I just wow. asked her to about it. I know you, you come mention it again. I, I, and, okay, and, and, and I never even knew about that. Yeah, yeah man, last week, I mentioned St. Andrew, you just mentioned the St. Andrew one. I never even mentioned the St. Andrew one. Yes, yes. Big yeah, argument. Man, you had but Andrew, had it at yeah, man, a terrible thing. Yeah. Yeah, give thanks to you, man. Yeah, man, blessings, blessings. Yeah, man, yeah. give thanks. We always remember him, but people tend to feel say, why the man they dead long time, you know, that nothing to do with me. Marcus Gave founded the first political party in Jamaica. And because him tell the judge them in the court, say, 
them wicked and them do all sorts of things. Them lock him up in a Spanish town prison. But you know what I say now? Because that's a serious thing. Marcus gave a philosophy and opinions in at this time here. To me, it's more relevant than the Bible. I know our people don't go to hear me say that, but we have we are said it non apologetically that Marcus can have a philosophy and opinion is more relevant today to African people than the Bible. Yet still, we shun it. Because some people, I remember, that, uh, uh, well, earlier in the year, about January, I had the the tax office and I bridge in, one of the security them run come to me and I say, Muta, why, I like what you are doing them things, but I want you to recommend a book to me. So, I say, all right, you which book I recommend to you? I go find a book me in the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Giavi. Hear him. Marcus Giavi. No, I want a book with motivational. I <laughs> say motivational, then, what do you think Marcus Giavi philosophy and opinion is? He said, yeah, but that I deal with some black thing and thing. That, you know, I want something like, you know, you know which book they want. As some white people, motivational book he might talk about, you know. Some white people, motivational book he might talk about. You know, them book where you sit on bookshelf, how to be a better person and how to this and that and that. So, me as a virgin, you see the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Gavi. It cover all aspects of human life. It's not just a book where you want things say, yeah, it'll tell you about black and white and black and white. It's a man who dig deep. And you know, so we're going we're to read some philosophy and opinions of Marcus Gavi tonight, yeah. For those of you who never hear the philosophy and opinion, I, you see, it hurt me that I have to keep doing these things, you know. I have to keep doing the same thing, the same way, continuously, continuously, because it's like we are talking to a brick wall. The philosophy and opinions of Marcus Gabby should be taught in schools because it is a motivational book. It is a book that deals with life. And you have other books of philosophy and opinion. You have other books. You have the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Gabby, volume two. You have life and lessons. Very important book, life and lessons. But these books is from my shelf, from suddenly come bridging shelf, you talk about black and all them something there. And them just regulated to just, yes, you know, Marcus Gavi was a black man who would stand for black people rights and them thing there. Marcus Gavi was more than that. That is why them say him is one of the greatest philosophers. And it's not black people that say that. You know, when you hear them talk about Marx and Lenin and all them things, as philosophers and all these people, Marcus Gavi stand above a whole heap of them people there. A whole heap of them European, what they would have called philosophers. Carl Jung and, you know, all of these great German philosophers that you see here about. Marcus Gavi, they write up there with them. Lenin, all them people there. So, it's just amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing that when you go to Marcus Gavi, where Marcus Gavi supposedly born, did live, and now we get to find out, say, maybe he never leave the barn, so a card in tow, where hear me, I should say, in that team, where you're going to hear tonight, where we keep playing. I will keep playing it over and over and over. Hear me, I should talk, talk about which part you used to run up and down as a child. And me, I say, really and truly, Oh, we see how certain other people always look at certain people, like Albusta Manti, where send police to kill black people, Rastafari, Regional City, in a coral garden. And then when we look at which part Marcus Gavi used to there, where woolly people from all over the world want to pay what they call pilgrimage, pilgrimage to Marcus Gavi place. And when we see the place where I'm there, we ask about wait, how oh, them make it stay so? How oh, them make it stay so? Years in, me argue with, 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 with me argue with Bobsy. We have programs. I think about three Marcus Gavi tribute on the IRA. 
we have her on the phone. We have her, I think she did inside her, the, 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 my, um, in, a, in a, the, 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 the car park at uh, 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 RFM. We have the woman who did it now, are still did it, are moved now. We don't know what happened. But we don't hear nothing more about it. Nothing more about it. And now here comes Marcus Garvey Earth Day again. Where I refer to tell you, well, you know, this year now they're going to have virtual, virtual celebration. Yeah, should I should tell you about that. I refer to going to have a virtual celebration of Marcus Garvey Earth Day this Sunday. This Sunday, I mean, I've no such recess already. This Sunday. We'll tell you more about that as time goes on. Maybe tomorrow we'll tell you more about that. But we're going to read the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey and maybe read others too. Yeah, I maybe read other book too, but it's just amazing. No one remember. Well, not no one, but it still goes that no one remember what Marcus Garvey. We we'll still have to say it that way there. And I refer So, as we say, we want to present to you the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. And it, it was called Africa for Africans, compiled by Amy Jakes Garvey. For those of you who don't know, Amy Jakes Garvey is Marcus Garvey's second wife. His first wife was called Amy Ashwood Garvey. And if you know Jakes Road, around them area, the Mountain View there, all of them area that it belong to our family. Yes, Amy Jakes. Okay, so we want to read some, some things from this. Where the virgin say, Marcus Gavin, no, some more, more, some more motivational man. <laughs> like, <laughs> we are telling you, say, no, we're in a bad state, you know. We're in a bad state. Where about you about Marcus? You, you tell him, say, him say he want a motivational book. I tell him philosophy and opinion. I said, no, man, that's not philosophy, that's not motivational, man. That's a black thing. Black thing can be motivational. <laughs> black thing can be motivational. Anyway, Marcus Gabby say, listen to what Marcus Gabby say. Education is the medium by which a people are prepared for the creation of their own particular civilization. And they advancement and glory of their own race. Education is a medium by which a people are prepared for the creation of their own particular civilization and the advancement and glory of their own race. The evolutionary scale that weighs nations and races balances like for all the peeps, peoples. Hence, we feel sure that someday the balance will register a change for African people. How oh dare anyone tell us that Africa cannot be redeemed when we have 400 million men and women with warm blood, all right, coursing through their veins? The power that holds Africa is not divine. The power that holds Africa is human. And it is recognized that whatever man has done, man can do. I got me I say that I one of my greatest philosophy will carry me. Whatever man can do, man can do. Whatever man has done, man can do. So you see, when me see all them something here, yeah, I go on, COVID and things there, like, man can't stop this. You see, all certain things over here, say, man couldn't do for a long time. Man can do it, but guess what? He can't go further than where him there in his consciousness and him thinking. He might have to wait, wait for that opening. You know, it's like you travel to a certain hole, and it's it, it to open. The more you go in at the hole, the more it to open. The more it to open. But you don't know what is ahead of it. Well, is that what I say? You understand, say, there's more to happen, more to go to. But because which part you there, you have to have that. 
nerve. And Marcus Garvey has shown you, say, the power that holds Africa is not divine. The power that holds Africa is human. It's human. The things that put wrong, is man put things wrong, and is man have to put it right. It's just that, you know, you don't matter about say man, the, the earth will get destroyed. It's not the earth will get destroyed. It's human beings that destroy himself to make life miserable upon earth for him to survive. But the earth will always be here because the earth was here before man. Man is the last thing. And this is what I say. Man is the last thing to come on this planet here. Man, the last living or inanimate object to come upon this planet here. So, Marcus Giave say, the power that holds Africa is not divine. The power that holds Africa is human. And it's recognized that whatever man has done, man can do. Be as proud of your race today as our fathers were in the days of, of your. We have a beautiful history and we shall create an, ad, another in the future that will astonish the world. Be as proud of your race today as our fathers were in the days of your. We have a beautiful history and we shall create another in the future that will astonish the world. A happy but miserable state in which man finds himself from time to time. Sometimes he believes he is happy he, by loving. Then suddenly he finds how miserable he is. It is all joy. It sweetens. All right, turn pierce quick. It is all joy, it sweetens life, but it does not last. It comes and goes, but when it is, uh, act, when it is active, there is no greater virtue because it makes one supremely happy. We cannot hold our love, but there is one love that never changes or is mistaken, and that's the love of God. The longer we hold our love, the nearer we approach life unto our Creator. Marcus Gavi, the whole world is run and bluff. <laughs> the whole world is run and bluff. No race, no nation, no man has any divine right to take advantage of others. Why allow the other fellow to bluff you? We can read that again. The whole world is run and bluff. No race, no nation, no man has any divine right to take advantage of others. Why allow the other man to bluff you? This is the words of Marcus Messiah Gavi. And we have to live by certain words. And we talk about philosophy. And we know that Marcus Garvey philosophy is as great and as meaningful as any other philosopher. The thing with it is that Marcus Garvey is specifically pointing to the African race. He's trying to wake you up out of your slumber and your sleep. So him direct all, all of him speaking, all of him talking and him philosophy is geared towards the advancement of upliftment of African people. And some people can't take that. Some people can't take that. The only protection against injustice in man is power physical financial and scientific the only protection against injustice in man is power 
physical, financial, and scientific. Since I'm not tell about it, we have to take the responsibility to do it. Marcus Garvey said, I am not one of those Christians who believe that the Bible can solve all the problems of humanity. The Bible is good in its place. But we are men. We are the creatures of God. We have sinned against him. Therefore, it takes more than the Bible to keep us in our place. Man is becoming so vile that today we cannot afford to convert him with moral, ethical, physical truths alone. But with that which is more effective, implements of destruction. Can we read that again? Because Marcus Garvey also says, leadership means everything. Pee and blood and death. Leadership means everything. How much people can take that? That when you take unto yourself to become a leader, you must recognize that the road is rocky, rocky. It includes pain, blood, and death. I am not one of those Christians who believe that the Bible can solve all the problems of humanity. The Bible is good in its place, but we are men. We are the creatures of God. We have sinned against him. Therefore, it takes more than the Bible to keep us in our places. The world ought to know that it could not keep 400 million black people down forever. Marcus Mosiah Garvey speaking. As we said, this book was compiled by Amy Ashwood Garvey. The philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. And I know that if you want to copy it, Miguel Mabridgin, Miguel Lan, Laya Bridgin, he, re it, he republish it. Yeah, he republish it. So, as you can see, a raster man open a publishing house where he's republishing some of these books where, you, where even though we didn't have it in at them time there, but no, you can't say so you can't get it again. Because the Virgin are republished book. How come them not have it in a school? I remember the first time I got to Senegal, the president was like six foot something. And the only book that I did work with was the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. And I presented it to him. And was talking about the visa. So how come them have we as Africans a come there without visa? And him say, you know, you're right. We're going to stop this thing. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, the man passed away before him could have really make it in law. And I find some way for this thing happened that we went to Gambia and we make this big speech, say, Oh, come to Africa and we have to have a visa for come at this place. And yeah, yeah, the same president. Decide, say, I'm going to give us some of our citizenship. And I'm signing the paper, citizen sign and seal. We say, so when we come back, we'll get the passport. We must send the passport them to me. Still have the paper sign and seal. I asked a Cambian the other day, when I saw which family, the Atlanta or something, say, yeah, them things are still valid, you know, from the president to sign it, even though I'm not a president again. But you can use it. Well, them deposed Jamin, yeah, yeah, and he's now exiled in Guinea. Yes, he's now exiled in Guinea. But why I say that is because, yeah, yeah, he's a, he knew about Marcus Yavi and he really studied Marcus Yavi just like Kwame and Kuma. Kwame and Kuma. Black star, where you see in a um, flag, the red, gold, green, and black, the black star. Is Marcus Garvey black star liner? Marcus Garvey influenced him to the point where he write, he write and say, is the most, in, the most, per, the, the person that have more, more effect on him in a um, political life was Kwame Nkrumah. 
Kwame Nkuma influence him. We talk about Joe Mokenyata, the burning spear. I hope people don't even know that the burning spear, the singer, got him name from the burning spear in Kenya, Jomo Kenyatta, was influenced by Marcus Garvey. That one of, one of the politicians named Dudley Thompson was him liar during the Mama uprising. Then we have Nelson Mandela, celebrated Nelson Mandela, who read Marcus Garvey religiously in prison. I don't know why I'm thinking when he come out of prison, but I know say he was a lover of Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey had 20 million people a follow him. 20 million black people a follow Marcus Garvey. So can you imagine that this man here come from Jamaica and we still now recognize how important and significant him in. So 20 million black people all over the world used to follow him. The man have a shipping line. We don't teach the children them that in school. Because this is what you call motivational. For the time when he did a living her, for have them things around him. It's really a feat in itself. It come like magic. It come like magic. This is we'll talk a while ago, so we'll take some call. We'll take the call them. So if anybody have things we say, just say it. Because, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't take them a couple of weeks now because there was something wrong with, something was wrong with the, the, the line them. But I think we're up and ready now. As you can hear, we just take a call and somebody just call me and I'll take a call. We didn't read something a while ago, we're going to read it again. I know take the people in the ear where we did I say. The policy of the colored intellectual. Marcus Garvey talked about the policy of the colored intellectual. You know who is a colored intellectual, okay? The present day Negro, a colored intellectual, is no less a liar and a cunning thief than his illustrious teacher. His accidental training only fits him to be a rogue and a vagabond and a seeker after the easiest and best by following the line of least resistance. He is lazy, dull, and uncreative. His purpose is to deceive the less fortunate of his race, and by his wiles ride easily into position and wealth at their expense, and thereafter agitate for and seek social equality with the creative and industrious whites to every rule however there is an exception and in this case it must be applied the man who bring marcus gave to pop music and make him known beautiful man if you do that that's how powerful reggae is because if it wasn't burns be a whole man would know about marcus gave marcus gave say Nationhood is the only means, the only means by which modern civilization can completely protect itself. Independence of nationality, independence of government is the means of protecting not only the individual but the group. Nationhood is the highest ideal of all peoples, nation or the matter about. Marcus Gave on the topic of the image of God. The image of God. Listen to this. If the white man, maybe that's really, you can't say why a system that is so embedded in the British idea of things would not want to really give heed to the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey, even though other people do it. Anyway, the image of God, Marcus Garvey said, if the white man has the idea of a white God, let him worship his God as he desires. If the yellow man's God is of his race, let him worship his God as he sees fit. 
We are Africans. We Africans have found a new ideal. Why is our God has no color, yet it is human to see everything through one's own spectacle? I can read this again. Whilst our God has no color, yet it is human to see everything through one's own spectacle. And since the white man... All right, come on, come again, come again, I'll mix it. And since the white people have seen our... Come again, okay. Whilst our God has no color, yet it is human to see everything through one's own spectacle and since the white white people have seen their god through white spectacles we have all the now started out late though it may be to see our god through our own spectacle the god of isaac and the god of jacob let him exist for the race that believe in the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. I can read that again. The God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Let him exist for the race that believe in the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. We Africans believe in the God of Ethiopia. The everlasting God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy One, the one God of all ages. So I can read that again. The God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, let him exist for the race that believe in the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. We Africans believe in the God of Ethiopia. They have a lot. Hey, oh, I remember say, it's not a Rasta man attack. They say, you know, it's Marcus Gavi. It's not a Rasta man attack. It's a Marcus Gavi. It's, it's Marcus Gavi himself attack about the image of God and how other people view film God through film own eyes. In other words, you make God in your own image. It's not God I make you in my own image, you know. It's you I make God in I'm your own image. So, the Chinese man, not no wrong if him see God through female eyes of the Chinese. The white man, not no wrong if him see film God through female eye as a white person. Black people is the only set of people see God through somebody else's eye. When you look on Buddha, Buddha, according to the stories, come from India. And I don't know how much people know that, but you can look on a Buddha from India, different from a Buddha from China or Japan. Because the two images them look like the people them were, shout out the name. So even though Watama Buddha is said to have come from India. When you see a statue of Gautama Buddha, it's a slim man with a little when him locks wrap up in him head on the top of it. When you look on the Chinese Buddha, it's a fat Buddha with him belly puff over upon him knee and him head shine. That is making God in your own image. I wonder if people don't even realize that. That the fat, the fat Buddha is a Chinese Buddha and the slim Buddha is an India Buddha. When you look on the white Jesus, the man that make Jesus in his own image, but guess what? Because him have the power to decide your outcome. And because you live amongst him, and him is the power over you, him is your master. The white God is where him worship. And him have you now I worship this white God. And now you will die for this white God too. Because if somebody come tell you, say, God is a black man, and you put a picture of African in your house and say, a Jesus that. You're liable to have to run out of your house if he's a youth. Especially if him have a 
Jesus. <laughs> Especially if you have a lot. You have to call the top of Jesus a while ago. And the last thing. You think, say, your grandmother, after she had lived over she years, you could have got take a picture and paint it with a lot and carry going to your house. Maybe no, because grandmothers, it's not like grandmothers then. You know, you have grandmothers with 50 and 60 and 70 and year old. If, if a youth now get conscious and carry that, going to her house, she would have said, oh, it's a different version of Jesus, this door. But you see, grandmothers, when my grandmother era and my mother grandmother era, you think you could have carry a picture in the house with a black man, with a staff and a man and a little lamb round him and say, this is Jesus. You better come out of the house with that. That's a devil thing. As a matter of fact, you see this picture with um, Beyonce? They ma- Beyonce have a new thing I go around the place, album. I think it's an album where she, 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 she trying to look like an image of a ancient Egyptian goddess. And she just up herself like the ancient Egyptian goddess. Because I'm sure the Egyptian goddess which she had try to look like. Black people in America, so she had devil worship, she had worship devil. You see, when, when they did come out with the ankh, I think Jay-Z, Jay-Z did start to come out with the, not, not the ankh, the eye of Horus. Yes. And the ankh too. And what's your name? The, um, they come out with the, with the, with the ankh and make the ankh get popular. But when they come out with this thing, with the, 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 the pyramid and the eye, them say, as some devil thing them people have come up with and now Beyonce under fire now Beyonce under fire because she come up now with this goddess black goddess and them say a devil thing serious devil thing yes when you look on the Notre Dame in a Europe the one we born on the other day if you see the image them were in front me go to go see all them image there with some hands I push out the so and them look like some creatures out of nowhere. And a church sign them you know, even in New York, you know. The big church with Long and Manhattan there, you know. You see some horrible looking animal creatures with that two head and all them something there. And something that come out of them belly and all them something there. And a church sign it, the part of people don't look at it. So Marcus Gabby say, look here, if a guy will do that, you know, a feel thing that, you know, see, don't feel the way, a feel thing that, but you know. You say, oh, I think. Our thing must have our image. Yes, he said, we must worship God through Ethiopia. That is the God in which we believe. But we shall worship him through the spectacles of Ethiopia. Marcus Gavi said that. Not Rasta said that. Marcus Gavi, in the 20s, I said that. We see the image of God through the spectacles, looking through our own glasses. We say God through Ethiopia. So, we as Rastafari decide, say, watcha. Our image, our God must look like we, the image of God. Because it's man, if there was no man, there wouldn't be the concept of God. All images of God come from the mind of man. There was no image out there that specifically put there by a creator that say this is our look I have one nose maybe I do have one nose you understand maybe I do have no mouth maybe it's ten foot half maybe I do have like this but is your mind that is creating these images is your mind creating the images when you hear about Zeus and Thor and the Nordic gods and all these people, in those times when Zeus was the Greek god of gods, these people used to worship Zeus. You think you could have tell them, say, no, Zeus never exists. You're mad. Them put stick through your head and cut off your neck 500 times and, th- and roll it down the mountain. But no, who, who believe in a Zeus again? Nobody not believe in another Zeus again. Zeus was the god of all gods. Zeus used to have all kinds of virgins around him. 
You have Hercules. You have Neptune, Apollo. All of these gods was gods where people worship all of them life. Grandmothers come, mothers come and worship these gods. But no, these things is not of our help. We don't believe those things again. You know, see, there was a time when people used to have altars where them have virgins, even in, a, in a South America, Central America. They have people who used to sacrifice virgins to the gods. They that they may go upon one of them in a, um, in a bellies, amongst the Mayan, the Mayan temple them. Where them have these Mayan temples, where them built a stone. No cement, no make them in a stone. Take all 30, 40 years to build one of them. And them used to give praises to them God, and them get virgins. And them say, it's only virgin, the gods they want. It's only virgin. God love virgins, you know. That's why all Mary is a virgin, you know. Because it's not only in that tradition you have virgins, you know. In most traditions where God exists, the virgin are the one, the firstborn is always desirable to the Lord. These people used to throw the virgin them half of the, 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 the pyramid them to the gods. And them, the, these girls used to grow up believing, say, this is what them want to happen to them when them grow at a certain age. Can you imagine that? Children are grow up and I say, oh, it's going to be so beautiful. When I reach the age of 20, I will be into the hands of the gods. And she look forward to be thrown off these pyramids. But nobody believed those things again. Nobody believed those things again. Because this is the mind of man. It's the mind of men doing these things. You know? It's nothing else but the mind of men. See? Man is creating these things as him go along in him culture. Because it's culture that bring religion, you know. It's not religion bring culture, you know. It's culture bring religion. Because out of culture, man starts to think all sorts of things and develop all sorts of things. Because look on, look on at Abraham. Abraham must go and go take him own son and, and sacrifice him son to the Lord. You know, hear a voice and say, if you fool say you love me, do this thing here. This is an almighty God who wants you prove that you love him, you know. And him know all. Him supposed to know if you love him or not, you know. Him is supposed to want you to prove that. Him supposed to say, well, this, as me, make this man, you know. Because the vessel can't question the maker, you know. So, I do say him don't love me. So, I'm going to prove to himself that the man love him by making the man take him only son or sacrifice him son. And then when the man go to kill him, say, all right, don't do it. A bluff me, a bluff. Now me know say you love me. Because these people were sacrificing people. It's not a, it's not a new thing developed, so you know. These Israelites were sacrificing them young children to the gods. Just like the Mayan people, them. Just like our holy people. And then, him said, no, don't do it. And now we have other gods now. In other places. But the powerful, the almighty, the people them who conquer and dominate, the freedom God run the place. The freedom God run the place. Anybody who is in power, it's freedom God run the place. You can know the powerful by the concept of God that exists amongst the people them who is not powerful. If a man colonize you, you quite, the language and the religion is the thing going to take all of you. And the language and the religion is what is placed in front of you as the reality, as a logical explanation about who you are and who you should worship. So when you hear Marcus Garvey say, yes, if he want to worship God through Abraham, Isaac, make him go and go do it. I don't have no problem with that. But don't come tell how he must do it too. Because film God can't serve me. Because it's him God put me in the position where me, you know. So if him I worship God, and him in that powerful position, and me I worship him God, and me in a, the slave position, something wrong, something rotted wrong with that. Fim God make him healthy, wealthy, and wise. 
and feel God make me in poverty and disgrace and shame and as I look for better and all the things when me dead. Come here, look on him and he must say, he might get the things them when he's alive. But me dead in my head, I say, all right, when me die, you know, we're going to the street pay with gold and we're going to up there and the pearly gates up this and that. And nothing not happened for me. So why me thinks a thing that ever saved me from where he might do to me and my four parents and my foreign parents before them? No. We have to wake up and look, you know, put on your glasses. Your glasses. We're going to show you your idea, your concept. And you have to create it out of your culture. You know, see, culture is dynamic. Culture is something that reveals itself the more you live it. And that is how people come up with all sort of things. Everything, every religious belief for yourself on the earth. It's man come up with it. It's not no supernatural nothing. No supernatural nothing. No come up with nothing for earth. It's man. Whatever man can do, man do. A man has the authority and power to do things outside of thinking where him have now because it evolved into something else later down the line. You know, see it? So when I'm going to tell you about fame God and your God and you must worship God and you might tell you how to worship your fame God and everything. And you know, believe your fame God. You know, feel your fame God. You feel say, it's God for all everybody like all oh, them would have kill the, 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 the Roman, the Greek, the, the Greek, they would have killed the Roman them for not worship Zeus. And then the Romans, they would kill other people because they no worship like the Romans, they used to kill the Christians, they called them. <laughs> I tell you, you know, so the Christians was once known as pagans in Rome. The Christians was once seen as pagans, you know, because they never used to worship the gods of Rome. And then now, because they is a conqueror, you know, you know. The third way, you know, the conqueror now start to usurp the religion that they call Christianity and take it for themselves, twist it and turn it and shape it into a Roman idea. And it facilitate the power that them have over the people them who actually create that. So it's not that Christianity was created by white people because white people don't create nothing. No religious idea or perspective come from white people, you know. It's people with them with a call of color outside of Europe create this thing. And them usurp it and bring it to them and shape it and turn it and make it become for them own. So by the time them shape it and turn it, you know, it have no resemblance of where them get it from. So that's why Jesus you now is white. Jesus is white because he's white. You know, see, because when you look on it, the Jews them never worship no Jesus. The Jews them never worship Jesus. And some guys come now and twist around the thing you now and make you believe the boy right now. Yes, all right. We will call a man named Jesus. We will give him a passive thing. So I'm not gonna fight against Rome because that is what Jesus said. Jesus now fight. That's a turn on the cheek. But I say to you, turn the next cheek. You have said urge to say this and that, but here I have said no. Because they have pacified the people them. Because the people them did a fight against Rome. That's what they did do, you know. Them have zealots a fight against Rome. And how for I pacify these people you now is to create an image and an idea that will make them be so passive that they won't have no God to fight, just like what them do it in a, a slavery. It's just that them so vicious that them create torture and make pregnant women and make children sit on and watch the wickedness and cruelty where them perpetrate upon black people. That's when these children grow up and when the mothers have children. Them teach them children not to resist because them don't want what happened to them father happen to them. Them don't want what happened to them sister happen to them. So we grow up with this passive idea that we must just bow and yield to what them say to we and what them do to we and what them give we. And we contend with it. And we feel happy in other filth. And he says it's, it's nice pea soup we in her. So we know and we understand the power of image. And our image in our head and can't come out of our head. 
continuously it can't come out. It can't come out because we don't want it to come out, because we don't know what we're going to replace it with. But if you just allow it to come out, something else will come there. All you have to do is just allow it to come out, you know. God, this and Yahweh, Yahweh, Melody, this and all of that. And I turned them head to the east and I preached and I pray and he, he, Jacob and these 12 tribes. Have, and them not believe what them are say. That is just a cultural expression. It's joke business. And we take it serious more than them. And we say, it go, oh, 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 you think it's going to help you? It not help you. It never it helped them. Because them know for use it, but we don't know for use it because we the power now Marcus Gabe talk about the power. It's power. The only thing man knows is power. And we must gain that power and recognize the truth in ourselves that these things not why help me. We have to maintain and decide and create our own ideas and concepts. A boy of humble beginnings, taking his first steps towards a life decorated and defined by the search for a proud black identity. The journey began on August 17, 1887, in a rural district nestled in the garden parish of St. Anne, where the union of a mason and a domestic worker birthed a living legacy of black self-empowerment. When you hear him describe his mother, um, Sarah Jean Garvey, she had a different kind of influence on him. I think that he inherited a lot of her sense of compassion. Marcus also inherited much from his father, Marcus Messiah Garvey Sr. Together his parents gave him a strong foundation, starting at 32 Market Street in St. Anne's Bay. The Universal Negro Improvement Association, the Pan-African Movement, the Negro Factories Corporation, the Black Star Liner Shipping Company, all symbols of achievement to which Garvey could lay claim. But his life was more than the public platform familiar to most. Garvey was equal parts Pan-Africanist and father, equal parts orator and husband, scholar and son, national hero, and lifetime student. As a young boy, Garvey developed a love of reading, first from his father's private library, and later, the more extensive collection of his godfather, Alfred Burroughs. An apprenticeship with Burroughs at age 14 provided a platform for literary expression through the printing press. It's an influence that would find expression in several newspaper developments and publications throughout Garvey's life. Even as he trod the path of visionary, philosopher and scholar, Marcus Garvey was a family man. After a long courtship, he married Amy Ashwood in a private Catholic church ceremony, followed by an elaborate public ceremony and reception at Liberty Hall on Christmas Day, 1919. The union didn't last. But Garvey found love and family life again with his longtime secretary, Amy Jakes. The two married in July 1922 and had two sons, Marcus Jr. and Julius. You can see letters that they, they wrote to each other when his sons were in Jamaica and he was in England. He has nicknames for them. Um, he speaks to them the same way a loving father would speak to any child. From the dirt tracks in a small rural community to a global stage promoting change, the right excellent Marcus Mosiah Garvey was the epitome of ambition. When you look at his background versus what he was able to achieve in a very, very short time period, you have to recognize that 
it was ambition that was driving him. But most importantly, he had ambition, not just for himself, but for people of his race. He wanted black people to be liberated in every sense of the word, not just physically, but mentally, economically, socially, and so on. On June 10, 1940, a nation lost a hero. Humanity lost a world changer. Marcus Garvey was finally laid to rest in 1964 in Jamaica after 52 short years. The man from St. Anne's Bay had given black people a new way of looking at themselves. He'd told them to embrace their identity, that they could achieve anything. Up you mighty race, accomplish what you will. No one remembers old Marcus Garvey, no one remembers.